Today we will be making mercury 2 chloride from mercury metal. Mercury 2 chloride, also known as corrosive sublimate due to its tendency to sublime at higher temperatures, is an extremely toxic mercury compound which is also a very useful laboratory reagent and earlier used in the treatment of syphilis. The problem here is that we cannot directly make the compound by merely adding mercury metal to hydrochloric acid because the reaction between them is very poor. So first we do a nitration by adding concentrated nitric acid to make mercury nitrate and then we convert it into the mercury oxide and then add hydrochloric acid into it to make the mercury 2 chloride. These are the materials required. I used about 15 milliliters of nitric acid and it turned out to be a problem for me. I will explain that in the coming part. So without further ado, let's begin. Start by measuring out 10 grams of mercury metal. Mercury as you know is a metal that exists in the liquid state at room temperature. Now we add 15 milliliters of concentrated 70% nitric acid into the round bottom flask. Into that, we add the 10 grams of mercury metal. Immediately upon addition of the metal, you can see a bubbling and yellowish brown discoloration of the contents of the flask. Okay, now let me explain the mistake that came from my part. I did the stoichiometric calculations and took about 15 milliliters of nitric acid to the exact requirement. It is said that we should take a little excess. Now my solution not only have mercury 2 plus but also mercury plus ions. Both mercury 1 and 2 nitrates are being produced. But actually the predominant reaction that is going on is given in the screen. Mercury reacts with nitric acid to form mercury 2 nitrate, nitrogen dioxide and water. When all the mercury metal has dissolved and when the solution turns clear, we add sodium hydroxide. You can see that a greyish precipitate is formed. This is the mercury 1 oxide. There was yellow to orange precipitate of mercury 2 also formed. I had to transfer everything into a bigger container since that small round bottom flask was not having enough space to hold the volume of mercury oxides. Later when I added the rest of the sodium hydroxide, the beautiful precipitate of mercury 2 oxide formed. The mercury 2 oxide has a beautiful orange to yellow color. This also substantiates that my solution contained both mercury 1 plus and 2 plus. We then filtered the solution to collect the precipitate which contain a mixture of mercury oxides. After the filtration step, we washed the precipitate a couple of number of times with distilled water to remove the excess alkali present in it. Then we transferred it into a 100 ml Erlenmeyer flask and started adding concentrated hydrochloric acid into it. Upon addition of the hydrochloric acid, greyish white precipitate of mercuric oxide and sometimes maybe mercury metal remains. The orange yellow precipitate is getting dissolved in hydrochloric acid forming mercury 2 chloride. So I decided to add some 30% hydrogen peroxide solution to make all the mercury 1 plus to mercury 2 plus and as you can see all the mercury oxides have now dissolved in the solution and the solution has now turned clear.
Finally, I started boiling the solution. Upon boiling down some water, the solution turned to this yellow color, probably some iron contamination from somewhere. After complete evaporation of water, we are left with this precipitated compound which contains both mercury 2 chloride and some iron contamination. So I let it heat for some more time and you can see that sublimated mercury 2 chloride along the side of the beaker and even on the glass steel rod which I left inside. After letting everything cool, I collected the solid product which weighed up to 13 grams. The yield came to 99.2 percentage. I usually do not give a voice cover accompanying the precautions part of my video. Most of my viewers just don't pay attention to that part or just skip that part of my video. But that shouldn't be the case here. Soluble mercury salts are very toxic. I specifically want to mention not to recreate what I am doing here without proper safety gear or you may end up in a disaster. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my Patreon supporters who have financially supported me so that I could get the materials required for doing all these experiments, including this one. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you loved the contents of this video, do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button so that you will get notified about my new videos.